North remembers. We know no king, but the king in the North whose name is Stark. I don't care if he's a bastard. Ned Stark's blood runs through his veins. He's my king from this day until his last day. What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another Game of Thrones video. I recently made a video where I listed some of the greatest fighters that are still currently alive in this show, and this led to many different discussions about not only the greatest fighters, but some of the greatest fight scenes as well. So, today I figured I would talk about just that. In today's video, I want to go over some of the great boss fights this show has given us over the course of seven seasons. I did not want to rank them this time, but I did want to put them in some sort of order, so I will go over them by order of appearance in the show, which means I will start with Season 1, then work my way up to Season 7. There are a bunch of different scenes that I want to show you, so let's get started right away. In the very first season of the show, we were given just a taste of what could possibly be the greatest fight of all time. I am convinced that if Robert Baratheon did not stop this fight, the Clegane brothers would have fought till the death, but it just ended up being one of the biggest teases in television history. The good thing is, both of these characters are still alive. Well, sort of. But I think most of us are expecting to see this fight pick back up where it left off. Only this time it will end with at least one of these characters being dead. Just imagine a climactic battle between two of the best and biggest fighters in Westeros, with the added rage of a lifetime of resentment, and you have Clegane Bowl. This is arguably one of the most anticipated showdowns. This brief sword fight between the Clegane brothers happened during Season 1, Episode 5. But what is interesting is, this was not the only boss fight that happened in this episode. The fight between Jamie Lannister and Ned Stark did not happen in the books. This was one of the changes that the show made, and I personally like this change. It might not have been the greatest sword fight in the show, but it certainly raised the stakes. Now, we all know Jamie is a far superior swordsman than Ned Stark, but I thought it was kind of interesting that one of the Lannister guardsmen felt it was necessary to stab Ned from behind. Jamie Lannister pretty much considered himself to be invincible at this point. But even though Ned Stark was a much older man, he was still able to defend himself quite well, which led to one of Jamie's men intervening in this fight, which really pissed Jamie off because he felt like he had the fight under control. Can you imagine how different this story would have been if Jamie ended up killing Ned during this scene? What would Catelyn have done with Tyrion then? I'm sure she would have wanted to kill him, but Cersei still had her daughters. Whenever I think back on this fight, I always like to imagine all the different scenarios that could have played out if Jamie won, or if Ned won. If Jamie and Ned would fight in the books, Jamie would win every single time. But let me ask all of you this. If Ned Stark would have not been stabbed in the back of the leg, how do you think this fight would have ended in the show? I'm curious to see what some of you have to say. Arya Child, we are done with dancing for the day. Run to your father. I feel like I cannot make this video without adding this scene with Sirio Pharrell. His part on the show was very similar to Oberyn Martell's. 
He was only in one season, but he was very likable, and he made a big impact on the community. This is probably one of the more controversial scenes in this series because of its ambiguous ending, which leads many fans into believing that Sirio Pharrell is actually Jagannagar. As much as I enjoyed watching Sirio Pharrell kick some Lannister ass, you have to admit this scene is also a little ridiculous. Sirio Pharrell was only armed with a wooden sword, but he still managed to knock down several men who were wearing armor from head to toe. On the other hand, what I do love about this scene is the fact that Sirio did not back down from this fight. He put his own life on the line in order to buy Arya some time. He was ready to give his life so that his student's life had a chance at having some kind of a future, and that's just one of the many reasons why I love the character Sirio Pharrell. This fight did actually happen in the books, but it played out a little differently. Brienne is an amazing fighter on the show, but she's not quite as good in the books. Jamie, on the other hand, is well known as one of the greatest fighters of all time. Brienne is certainly amongst the elite sword fighters in the realm at the time of her fight with Jamie, but she is not better than him. They're not even in the same league. Jamie is what you would call a prodigy, and he has been since a very young age. You have to remember that at the time of this fight, Jamie had been a prisoner for about a year. He wasn't able to train or even hold a sword during that time. When they fight each other in the books, Jamie does think to himself that Brienne is stronger than him, and the thought of that gave him chills. But later, when Brienne is reflecting on their fight, she knows that no one in the Seven Kingdoms would be a match for Jamie when he is healthy. But with all that being said, this was still a very fun fight to watch because we got to see two top characters test their skills against one another, even though it was a little unfair for Jamie. But I'm glad their fight was included in the show. Now this was fantastic because it actually ended with the death of Beric Dondarrion. Well, for a short period of time, until Thoros of Mir brought him back to life. I still remember what it felt like when I saw this scene for the first time because I thought it was a big moment in the show. Now that they have introduced characters being brought back to life, this changes everything. And George R. R. Martin even admitted this was the foreshadowing for what would later happen with Jon Snow. This is still one of my favorite scenes to date. You have Beric Dondarrion with his flaming sword, and you have the Hound, one of the most badass characters of all time, but he also has a fear of fire. The Hound has to face his fear in order to have a chance at freedom, and it won't end until someone is dead. Then we get the creepy resurrection immediately afterwards. This fight had all the ingredients to make a really cool scene that I think fans will remember for a very long time. You learn how to fight in a castle. Believe it or not, but Jon Snow actually learned a lot from this fight with Carl Tanner, the Fookin legend from Jin Alley. John was getting his ass kicked during this fight because Carl was not afraid to fight dirty, and John later adopted some of these methods which he used when he fought the Magnar during the attack on the wall. John realized that in order to survive, sometimes you need to get your hands dirty, and that's exactly what he did. When John fought Carl Tanner, I think a lot of people were disappointed because he may not have won this fight if it wasn't for one of Craster's daughters. However, I still think this is one of the greatest death scenes in the entire show. It's also a nice reference to the books because this is how Biter dies when he is pummeling Brienne of Tarth. No matter how cool a sword through the back of the head may look, it will never compare to this next scene because this one is known to make people's heads explode. You killed her children! <laughs> Fuck. 
kill the children. Then I race to Then I smash their head in like this. I still say this has to be one of the greatest moments in television history. Not only do you have two amazing fighters battling it out to the death, but Tyrion freaking Lannister's life hung in the balance. Even the scene leading up to the trial by combat was amazing, when Oberyn Martell told Tyrion the story about meeting him when he was still a baby. Then he declares himself Tyrion's champion before he leaves the cell. Oberyn Martell was an amazing character with an even better screen presence. He wasn't in the show or the books for very long, but he made one hell of an impact during his time in the story. I'm pretty sure that almost everyone wanted Oberyn to win. I know I was crushed when he lost, but I must say it made for one iconic scene that fans won't soon forget. Oberyn's vengeance was righteous, but unfortunately, it ultimately got him killed. You could say that thanks to some of Carl Tanner's dirty tricks, it led to Jon Snow winning this fight. And I think it's safe to say that Season 4 was a big turning point for Jon Snow. He was always a well-trained swordsman, but he had never had any real fighting experience outside of the training yard. He had trouble even holding on to his sword every time he got into a fight, but by this point, Jon is no longer just well-trained. He is now an experienced warrior, and his toughest task is still yet to come. This is another one of my personal favorite fights from the show, although it is a massive change from the books because these two characters have never fought before. This fight scene was a little controversial to say the least. I think almost everyone considers the Hound to be a better fighter than Brienne, but she clearly won this fight. But you have to remember, you gotta consider all the variables. The Hound was weakened, and he possibly had an infected wound on his shoulder because he refused to allow Arya to properly fix it whereas Brienne was well-fed and rested. She also had the best armor money could buy, and a better sword than money could buy because it was forged of Valyrian steel. The end of this fight also had a very big impact on the Hound's transformation as a character. This stone-cold killer continues to grow as one of the show's most sympathetic characters, because we have all seen how far he has come, and I think we would all like to see him make it to the finish line, and hopefully kill his own brother, Gregor Clegane. Unfortunately, Ser Barristan the Bold had fallen, but the legendary knight went down fighting, and he took about a dozen men with him. Ser Barristan Selmy knew the task of escaping the Sons of the Harpy was near impossible. He was fighting multiple men, far younger than he was, in a crowded space where he could be cornered and overwhelmed very easily. Yet he kept on fighting and doing his best until his last breath. As fun as it was to see Barristan carve through a dozen men like he was carving through a cake, this scene pissed a lot of people off. This character is still alive in the books, but the show decided to dispose of this character in a back alley in Marine. It was sad to see Sir Barristan go, but this makes me even more curious to know what happens with this character in the books. I would love to see him return to Westeros with a very big army behind him and three very large dragons above him.
This was another one of the game-changing moments in the television show. We already knew Dragonglass could kill the White Walkers, but Valyrian Steel had never been tested, until now, and it worked in dramatic fashion. Both Jon Snow and the White Walker were shocked when Longclaw was able to stop the magical Ice Sword, but it was even more exciting when Jon sliced through the White Walker, shattering him into a thousand pieces of ice. This even caught the attention of the Night King, and he was obviously very intrigued by what he had seen. Every time a White Walker dies, we learn a little bit more about their weaknesses. Sam Tarly was able to confirm that Dragonglass can kill them. Jon was able to confirm that Valyrian Steel can kill them. Then, when Jon killed another one in Season 7, it proved that not only does the White Walker die, but so do all of the Whites that that White Walker raised himself. This new revelation led to Beric Dondarrion suggesting that if you can kill the Night King, then his entire army should fall right along with him, since he turned them all. It's a very interesting theory, but we will have to wait and see what happens when and if it is ever put to the test. Your father beat him. Did he? I know he did. Heard the story a thousand times. <laughs> Well, I think it is safe to say this may be one of the most important moments in the history of the story. This was a day that Ned Stark had only dreamed about, but we only get bits and pieces of what actually happened. We obviously knew there was a fight, and as the two parties engage in battle, Ned hears his sister crying out his name, and the dream concludes with him making a promise before she dies. So far in the novels, what exactly this promise entailed is unclear. It has never revealed exactly how the battle unfolded, such as who killed who or in what manner. All that is known is that Ned Stark and Helen Reed were the only survivors. Thankfully, in Season 6, we got answers to so many of these questions, and now that we know who Jon Snow's parents actually are, this makes Jon Snow the true heir to the Iron Throne. So this moment in history will obviously have a major impact on the endgame of the series. It will be very interesting to see what Jon Snow decides to do with this information, considering the woman he is falling in love with believes she was born to rule the Seven Kingdoms. When the truth of what happened at the Tower of Joy becomes public knowledge, it is bound to send shockwaves across Westeros, and I can't wait to see the look on some of the characters' faces when they find out who Jon Snow really is. But let me know what you thought about the list. Were there any other boss fights you would have added? Put your thoughts down below in the comment section. I want to thank you all for stopping by and watching the video, I really appreciate that. And I also want to thank everyone on Patreon for continuing to support my channel. Thank you very much. I hope you all have a great day, I'll see you again very soon. Bye.